wilderness areas, wildlife habitat, parks and forests all have some features of public goods. So how do we place a value on a public good like this? Well, one way that economists have come up with is to say that we can imply the value that people place upon it by looking at markets that are related to it which do have a price. So we might look at the housing market and ask how much more are people willing to pay for a house close to this area of beauty? Or we might look at people's travelling and say how much are they willing to pay to travel into the area? So the principle of valuing this kind of externality or this kind of public good is to say can we find a related market and use that related market where there is a price to place a value on the public good. Philip Graves, an economist at the University of Colorado, argues that using this kind of approach substantially understates the value society places on the environment. If we save the species or if we clean up the air, uh, everybody gets those benefits. They may be very large benefits for uh, very large benefits for a sick person or a rich person if you clean up the air. They may care a lot about it. Uh, they may be very small benefits for somebody else, but the key is that we all get those benefits. So in order to determine the quantity of a public good like clean air that is socially optimal, economists use various methods to estimate how much of an individual's income would be devoted to purchasing the public good if it could be purchased. How much would you be willing to pay out of your given income to get more of the public good? And that's the so-called demand re revelation problem. So suppose you've got uh, Ben Shoppin. Ben Shoppin is this guy who likes mansions, he likes uh, SUVs, he likes European vacations, he likes expensive restaurant meals and wine. Ben Shoppin realizes that nobody's going to give him this stuff, but he does know that if he generates the income, he can have what he wants. And that's what's critical, because uh, he has to generate the income to get it, but he knows that if he does generate the income, he can get it. Now com contrast uh, Ben Shoppin with, uh, with Sten, for strong environmentalist. Sten, what he cares about is things like species preservation and wilderness areas and CO2 buildup and a wide variety of environmental and uh, resource problems that Sten is just too small to affect, and he knows it. And he knows that if he generates income, he can't buy what he wants anyway, because he, he, it's going to be a collectively determined decision, and he's going to be too small to make a difference. Since he, can, he can't buy what he wants by generating income, he's going to generate a lot less income. And it's going to look like to the economist that he has no value for anything. He doesn't generate income. He's not buying very much in the ordinary pri private goods. The economist thinks that, that he doesn't care much about goods, that he's just lazy. He likes leisure when in fact what he likes can't be bought by giving up leisure individually. It, the individual has the incentive to, uh, to misrepresent their preferences, whether it's buying out of a given income or, or whether it's how much they, additional income they would generate if they could buy the good by generating income. And in both cases, you have no incentive to do that or to reveal to anybody what you, how much you value these public goods. People who can't buy what they desire because it's a public good generate less income than they would if what they desired were private goods. Therefore their desire for public goods and the value they place on them is not detected by economists. According to Phil Graves, economists are underestimating the value that societies place on the environment. Markets then can be highly efficient, but under certain circumstances that efficiency may well break down. Two examples of this are externalities and public goods. And where we have externalities and public goods, there's a strong case for government intervention. But government intervention itself is unlikely to be perfect. So there are always going to be problems about how to deal with externalities and public goods.